Hi everyone, welcome to this month's i2 Caustics Coffee Break webinar. My name is Jonathan and I'm a consultant at RIB. This is a webinar which forms part of the industry trades such as m and &E, flooring, carpentry, etc. Now this video will be covering a portion of the doors and hardware trade. Those who don't know, i2 Caustics is a fully integrated estimating solution with universal applications supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, 2D and 3D CAD drawings, and BIM files. i2 Caustics is available in a variety of feature levels depending on the size of your business or your estimating requirements as shown up on the screen. i2 Caustics offers quick and easy on-screen takeoff and measurement that can be live linked to our comprehensive workbooks to help you save time and eliminate errors. The platform also offers a professional report writer, an auto-revisioning tool to help with new drawing versions, and much more. And as you can see, there are a huge variety of file types supported by i2 Caustics to help with compatibility, as we want your import or export process to be as smooth as possible. Our latest webinar covered the use of workbooks. It was a two part series, video series, where part one um, covered adding workbooks also went on to explain some of the workbook tools and functions and formula in workbooks. The second video of the part two went on to workbook tools again, albeit different workbook tools. Um, we covered the topic of exporting workbooks to Excel or utilizing the custom reports to do so. And thirdly, we covered generating workbooks from dimension groups linked to a rate library. Now, if you'd like to go ahead and view any of these recordings, please feel free to visit our website, www.rib-international.com forward slash webinars. Now, in this month's webinar, we'll be covering doors and hardware, as previously mentioned. And a little bit more specifically, when it comes to doors, we'll be looking at different types or sizes and how we could add dimension groups for those different sizes. We'll be trying to extract or measure architrave lengths, uh, door frames, and paint um, to those doors. We'll then also move on to some hardware such as hinges, door handles, locks, uh, door stops, kick plates, push plates, door closers, coat hooks, etc. Um, the list goes on. So, without further ado, let's jump into I2 Costex. So here I have a ground floor plan of a building and you'll notice if we focus on the drawing display window to begin with, if I had to zoom in to this drawing, you'll see that there are some door annotations telling us what the size of the doors are. Now that text at the moment is currently in sort of a yellow color, which is not very clear on screen. So what we can do if we want, if you wanted to change the background color to offer a better contrast, we can come up to our drawings ribbon tab and in the ribbon, you've got this button white. If I switch that white button off, you'll notice now it changes the background to a black color, offering a much, much better contrast of lines and text of this drawing. Now that, could be in, it could be the inverse case where um, the black background might not offer a, a good contrast, in which case you can then just turn that white button back on. For the time, for us moving forward, I'm probably just going to leave that um, white button switched off so that we have this black background. A lot better for us to all see. Now, in terms of measuring doors, whenever we want to measure something, we need to add something called dimension groups out towards the bottom left hand side. And you'll see I've got a few dimension groups already set up over here, which I'll get to a little later on. 
um, all of these doors or dimension groups have been placed into a folder over here called interior doors. And you'll see in this folder list, there's nothing pertaining to external doors just yet. So that's probably going to be the first one that we'll cover and show you how we can measure doors. Now, the focus of this webinar is to cover various different methods and you can go away and choose which methods suit you and your workflow and your business. And, and there's quite a few different methods. Um, and we'll start with some of the, the more basic methods and then we'll progress to more advanced methods as we go through this. Now you'll see I'll zoom into this door over here. It's an external door and it's telling us the size of that door. So to add the dimension group, we're going to go up to the dimensions ribbon at the top and then click on the add button. We have the dimension group properties window that pops up where we can now give this dimension group a name. For example, we'll just type in ext external doors followed by the size. We'll just type in 915 by 2134. The folder we don't want to place into the interior doors folder, so we'll just uh, type in a new folder here. I'm just going to put it into a um, main folder of, say, Windows and Exterior Doors. Like so. Now, the measurement type, that's where you'd set up how you want to be measuring off the drawing in the background. Um, and we'll start off with a real sort of basic way of measuring the doors and we just choose count. Quite simple. Um, you just choose the measurement type of count and the default display will also leave set to count. We'll ignore all the other fields beneath that for the time being and we'll just go ahead and maybe change the color to something other than lime. Just maybe just choose a, say a, a gold color there. And then we can click insert to add that dimension group. Now you'll see out in the list on, of dimension groups um, on the left hand side, it's automatically created a new folder called windows and exterior doors and it's placed the dimension group into that list. Now to do the measurement, we could select the dimension group and if you want to, you could change over to a point mode at the top and then move the mouse cursor over onto the drawing and just simply drop down a point and you'll see it's counted one door for us. If I zoom back out, there is a, another external door at the top over here. So I can just zoom into that one and drop down a point. Now, that's that's quite simple. We, we just go ahead, point and click to register count. So now I've got two exterior doors. Moving on to other um, methods, we're going to be focusing on our interior doors. Before doing so, something that could be quite useful, and this is not only in the doors and hardware trade, but any other trade, is you can utilize layers to help um, save views and, and, and access a, a very specific view very quickly. So for example, if I go up to the layers tab over here, and maybe on my drawings tab, I'll select show all so that all the layers are switched on for this drawing. There's quite a lot of noise at the moment on this drawing. So what we could do is we could zoom in to a door or just literally click on that door so, and you'll see all the doors disappear. Um, we also want to switch off the, the door sizes over here. Now, you'll see when I hover the mouse cursor over this text, the mouse does not attach itself to the text. And that's because a text layer is quite different to a line layer. So in order for us to um, attach the mouse to a text layer, we just hold down the T key on the, on the keyboard. And whilst holding down T, it'll attach itself to that text. And then we can click and you'll notice that the text is now also hidden from view. And you might be wondering why I've gone ahead and switched the doors off when in fact those are the objects that I'd like to measure. Well, that's one of the options to very quickly switch something off that you want to measure, but then come up to the ribbon and click invert. And you'll see we are now left with the actual objects or, or lines that you want to do measurement for. So I've gone ahead and just 
filter to only show our doors. Now, if you want to, you can save this view to save time. So in future, if you want to very quickly access this view, it's just a matter of opening that view up rather than having to switch layers on and off like I've just gone through. So let's click on save view over here. And I'm going to give this view a name of um, external and internal doors like that. And I'll place this into a folder um, called doors. And then click insert. Now I've gone ahead and saved that view. So if I were to click on show all, which will switch all the layers back on, I can very quickly access that view by simply coming up to this tab over here called views. And you'll see that I've got a few different um, views saved over here, one or two. Now I'm just going to click on external and internal doors, just like um, the one that we've just saved. And it's gone ahead and opened up the doors or only displayed the layers in, included in that saved view. Fantastic. So I'll just leave it as, like that moving forward. Let's go back to the drawings tab and proceed with some of the measurement now that the drawings are a lot cleaner and easier for me to read. So as I said, we've now expanded our interior doors and we've got a few dimension groups already set up to go ahead and do some measurement. But I just wanted to show you another method on how you could add dimension groups in um, to measure the doors and obtain slightly more intelligent information from that measurement rather than just a count like we did with the exterior doors. So um, let's go to our dimension groups tab at the top or ribbon tab and add in a new dimension group. Now we're going to give this dimension group a name called, say, internal doors with the size of 915 by 2032, that being one of the sizes in the background. The folder, we're going to place this dimension group into our interior doors folder. Now the measurement type earlier with the first example we went through, we just simply chose the measurement type of count. However, what we can do is we can also measure the length of the door off plan. And if we want to, we can set the default display. So yes, it will show the count. Let's change that to count. But we're going to be measuring the length of those doors on plan. Um, now, by changing the measurement type to length, what we could also do is we can add the height of the door so that when we measure the length of the door, it automatically multiplies it by the height and we are able to derive the wall area of that door. Maybe you could use that for deductions um, to internal walls or maybe you could use it for your paint area. So let's type in the door height of 2.032 as denoted by the size over there. And I'll leave the color set to line. Let's go ahead and click an insert to add this new dimension group. And you'll see there's our dimension group. And you'll see it's displaying a count, but the actual measurement of these doors on plan are going to be measured in length. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to just select this line type measurement, point the mouse cursor at this door and just simply click on that door leaf. Now you'll see it tells us in our dimension group that we've counted one door. But if I hover back at this measurement and point at the measurement that I've just completed, you'll see in the gray hint box, we've got a, a list of secondary quantity information as well. So we've, we've captured the length of the door. We've got the height of 2.03 meters. And therefore it's also automatically calculated the wall area of 1.86 square meters for us. So you can see this method that we've just followed is slightly more intelligent in comparison to that first method that we um, covered. There's another door over here. Um, it does swing both ways. So it is just one door. So I'm just going to click on that door leaf once. And now we've got two doors. And you'll notice if I hover the mouse cursor over this dimension group, it gives us 
a total or an accumulative list of quantities um, in the yellow hint box just off the mouse cursor. So it's telling us that we've counted two of those door types or sizes. We've got the total length and we've got the total wall area of 3.72 square meters. So that is another option or method of measuring doors. Let's move on to a different size. I'm going to select this dimension group over here of interior doors, um, 1830 by 2134. And we'll just go ahead and zoom into one of these doors over here. Okay. Now, so far, what we've covered is dropping down a point or measuring the length of the door leaf by actually clicking on the door leaf. What we could also do is utilize the built-in auto count feature within i 2 Caustic. So we'll click on auto count, which allows us now to capture images, or in this case, I'm going to capture text denoting the size of the door. Um, so I'll click on capture and I'm going to zoom into this door over here or the size with that text and simply just capture a box around that text like so. So there's the, the captured image out on the left hand side over there. And what we can do is we can now tell Costex, go ahead and search for that image, which will work through this entire drawing and look for the text that I've just captured, denoting the size of the door. So, and note that this functionality also works on, say, image files, image drawings, as well as um, PDFs. Now, it's gone ahead and found that one door, um, but what we might want to do is just reduce the search criteria. So you've got these scroll bars, which will reduce our search criteria. Maybe if I push it down, it starts picking up the other door sizes. Um, as you can see over there, it's picked up that one, it's picked up that one, and a few over here. So depending on um, the, the search criteria over here, or the accuracy of the search, you can manage the accuracy of that search. Obviously, if we had pushed it all the way up to 100%, it will literally only count that one um, object, or in this case, text. So I've dropped it down. It's gone ahead and found, typically, uh, uh, you'll find that um, different drawings have different percentages of the search criteria. On this drawing, the best solution is probably around 70%, which um, we're quite happy with. It's picked up eight of those doors, and now we can click Save Accepted, and when you return back to the dimension group, you'll notice the count in that dimension group. So it's gone ahead and dropped down a point on each of those door sizes for us. So that's utilizing the auto count feature. Another option is utilizing CAD block counts. So let's move on to a dimension group over here where we've got a size of 915 by 2134. Um, now I'll just utilize this line type measurement and zoom into one of these door sizes that match the dimension group name. Now to to use the CAD block count method, you just simply hover over a door or an object that is a CAD block and hold down the shift key and you'll notice it highlights that single CAD block. Now, if we hold down shift as well as control on the keyboard, you'll notice it picks up all the like CAD blocks throughout the entire drawing. So just by hitting that control key whilst also simultaneously holding down the shift, we can then click once and you'll notice it's gone ahead and counted all of those door sizes. And you'll see it's actually counted eight. There are, there are um, other doors that are the same size, but they are slightly different in that this is a, a, a different direction swing of door. So we can hold down the shift key on that option, uh, hold down control and then click and it would have now gone ahead and counted all the other options. For those that may have not been picked up, there may be a slight difference, for example, 
Um, maybe there's some sort of intelligence, such as fire rating or something attached to that pattern block, in which case it wouldn't be included as, as a similar type to your previous ones that you'd measured. So we can just simply hold down the shift key to, to highlight the block and click on each of those doors like that there, which would have now counted those doors. I think there's two at the top there as well of the same size. Great. At any stage, if you wanted to see or view um, which doors we have measured and which ones we have not yet measured, the easiest way to do that is to click on this folder. And you'll notice now it's highlighting um, the, the doors over here um, as the points that we've counted that size, as well as all the other doors that we've already measured at the top over there. Now, I've just realized um, that I've gone ahead and measured the external doors as a mistake. So if ever you want to delete a measurement or a count measurement, it's quite simple. You just point at the measurement and you, you don't have to click anything. You just press delete on the keyboard and it says, are you sure you want to delete that selected dimension? Yes, I'll delete that out as we had previously measured that as uh, in our external doors dimension group. Let's zoom into this external door over here. Delete on the keyboard. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I'm sure. And if I were now to also hold down the control key and select my exterior doors folder, we'll see that though both of those doors have in fact been measured in that dimension group over there. Here we have three doors of the same size um, that have not yet been measured. And we do already have a dimension group set up for this size. And this is moving on to um, another method of how you can measure doors. Now, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you how we could um, utilize intelligence in these dimension groups in the form of custom quantities. Um, these dimension groups can be built up with a lot of intelligence in them already um, and also allowing us to maybe answer a list of questions related to whether there is door hardware on these doors and so on and so forth. So I'll take you through an example first and then I will um, go through the process of how you can add in a similar dimension group to this one that I've already got set up. Now, what we can do is we can turn this button over here on called properties on add, which allows us to adjust the properties as we add this measurement, right? So I'm going to go ahead and measure the length of this door. So I'll just click on um, that point over there or just, sorry, not measure the length. I'm just going to actually going to count the door. And because I had turned on the properties on add feature, it opens with the dimension properties window, allowing us now to adjust some properties. Now, when I set this dimension group up, I went ahead and set up a list of custom quantities that I'd like to derive as I measure the door. So I want to calculate the door frame length. I want to calculate the architrave length. If there are any hinges, how many, and so on and so forth. So we can set up a list of custom quantities and based on a list of variables that you go ahead and answer, that will drive the quantities that are fed into our custom quantities window. So let's work through an example over here. Architraves, if I click on the drop down arrow over there, are there going to be architraves on both sides of the wall or just on one side? So you can choose from a drop down list, let's say both sides. Will there be a door lock on this door? Well, let's click on the drop down arrow, uh, yes or no. So I'll say yes. Um, how many hinges will be on this door? So you can see that there's two door leafs. Let's say that there's gonna be three hinges per door. That means that there'll be six in total. So let's type in six. The door handle, yes, there'll be one door handle. In fact, sorry, it's a double door. So we'll, we'll put in two door handles over there. Kick plates, how many kick plates will there be? Um, well, let's say there's going to be four kick plates. Oh, so two kick plates on each door leaf. So we'll click on that and choose four. A 
push plate, we're not going to require push plate, so I'll just change that to zero. Door stop. Um, are there going to be any door stops? Yes. And you'll notice because I answered yes for that question, it's now opened up another uh, variable for us to choose. So how many door stops will there be for, for these doors? Well, let's say we're going to allow one per door leaf. So I'll click on the drop down arrow and choose two. A coat hook, uh, we'll say that there's not going to be a coat hook on there. Um, you can see there, there's our options, true or false. I'm going to choose false, so there's not going to be a coat hook on either of those doors. Door closer, yes, there will be a door closer. Uh, and again, because I've chosen yes, it asks us how many door closers. Well, we'll allow for one per door leaf over there. So I can now just type in two. An acoustic seal. I click on yes or no, or maybe I'll choose yes, there will be an acoustic seal um, on that door. It'll automatically calculate the length of that acoustic seal around the door frame for us. Paint, yes, uh, there will be paint, and how many sides of the door will be painted? Um, is it going to be painted on just the one side of the door or both sides of the door? So let's choose both sides of the door. So by us now answering a list of questions, it will calculate the quantities for all of these custom quantities in this list. Now, this is just an example that I've set up. Um, you can go ahead and add more custom quantities. You have an unlimited amount of custom quantities that you might want to build into these dimension groups. And this is just an example for doors. You can use it for any other trades as well. So let's go ahead and click update. And you'll notice, yes, we've got a count of one of that type of door. However, if I hover the mouse cursor over this measurement where I registered the count, we've got a gray hint box with a list of all that secondary quantity information in that gray hint box. So the total length of the door, the total height of the door, we've got the wall area quantity, we've got the door frame length of six meters. Because we said architrave is gonna be, the architraves are gonna be on both sides of the wall, that's obviously going to be twice the length of our door frame. So we've got 12 meters. Hinges, we've got six door handles, two. Uh, door lock, one. A door stop, we've got two. Kick plates, we've got four. Um, a door closer, we've got two over there. And an acoustic seal, well, that because we said yes, there's going to be an acoustic seal, it will be the same length as our door frame. So in this case, six meters. And we also got paint, which we said will be on both sides of those doors. Um, which in theory is going to be twice the area of our wall area, which in this case it is 7.38 square meters. And then you can move on to counting the other doors so um, of the same type. So I'll we'll click over there and again it pops up with this window. Now you'll notice it's remembered the variables that you chose for that previous door that you measured. Um, however, you can maybe change that. We'll say this door doesn't need an acoustic seal, so we'll change no. Um, it it'll, it might only need two kick plates on this door, so we'll type in two. Um, door handles, obviously, we'll keep at two. Uh, a push plate, maybe we'll need a push plate on the one side, so we'll say a two over there as well. And now we can click update to do that measurement. And based on our selection for our answers to those questions of variables, it's now hard to go on ahead and quantify that. Um, those custom quantities for us. So this time, this door has got two push plates, whereas previously, the other door did not have any push plates on it. And then finally, we'll count this door over here, and we'll maybe change one or two things. We'll say that it's going to be, it's going to have four kick plates and zero push plates on the door. Um, and hinges, we've got six, we'll leave that as is. And there's maybe not going to be any door lock on here. Uh, door handles, but no door locks for this door. And then click update. So if we've gone ahead and measured those three types of doors, and, and you can see it's counted three, but when we hover the mouse cursor over this dimension group, you'll notice in our yellow hint box, we've got a whole list of secondary quantity information in that yellow hint box. So, you know, uh, listing all the different um, hardware that's been attached to that dimension group. So having showed you that as an example, 
you might be wondering, how do you set a dimension group up to um, obtain this type of intelligence? Let's work through an example of setting up a new dimension group. So uh, maybe for a different size, maybe we'll zoom in. I don't, we haven't yet measured these, these sizes over here. So let's add a new dimension group. We click on the add button, top left hand corner. We'll give it a name, we'll say internal doors with a size of, uh, there's the size of here. So we'll type in 813 by 2134. We'll place it into the same folder of interior doors. The measurement type, I'm just going to simply change that to count. And I might just change the color uh, to anything else but uh, lime. Now, if you want to add a list of custom quantities, just like in the example we looked at before, you can come up to the tab and click custom quantities. And you can insert an unlimited amount of custom quantities. So let's Let's maybe just set up um, three custom quantities over here. I'm going to click on insert. Let's give it a name. Uh, we'll type in the name, maybe say architrave. We won't, we won't set up an exhaustive list like we did before. Um, now the architrave is going to have a unit to measure of meters. We'll insert another one. We'll give this one a name maybe called doorstop. With a unit of measure of number and then one final one we'll say paint so we've set up three custom quantities with three different units of measure um, so the, the logic that we're about to show will apply uh, across other custom quantities as well great now we can come up to our measured dimensions, which is the area where you'd set up formula for um, our doors and, and our custom quantity. So each of these fields can house formulas in them or expressions. So we'll start off with the length. Now the length of the door, um, we can actually extract from the name or the text of the number in that dimension group. So I'm gonna delete that out and click on the ellipsis button out to the right hand side. And there is a, a sort of powerful feature where you, you can come up to the functions tab and there's a feature in here where it's called X number. This feature, as it says, it returns the index number found in text. So if we can use this feature to tell Costa, go ahead and look for the text in this, um, dimension group name for the size and use that as part of the length. So we'll double click on that. And we're going to find the number from our dimension group name. So we'll double click on that. Which number do we want to use? We're going to uh, say it's going to be the first number. So we'll put in one. And because the text or the number that I've written in the text is in millimeters, we probably want to go ahead and just put a bracket around that entire formula and then divide by 1000, like so. So I'll click on close. So that is a function you can build up to automatically pick up the length from the text in your dimension group name. So it's finding the number from your dimension group name, which number, the first number, there are two numbers in the dimension group name, and then it's dividing it by 1000. And we can do the same for the height of the door as well. So I'll untick that use default. I'm just going to copy this formula, so control C and control V into the height field. And instead of it picking up the first number from that text, I'm just simply going to change this to use the second number in the text. Moving on to the wall area of that door, we can click on the ellipsis button and say, the wall area is going to be the length multiplied by the height of the door. And click close. So we now have a formula for wall area calculation. Moving on to the architrave of the door, we'll click on the ellipsis button out to the right hand side. The architrave, um, well, first of all, we can set up a variable 
to say, is there going to be an architrave on both sides or just on one side of the wall? So we can come up to the variables tab and click on insert. So we're just going to insert a name of the architrave. The type will be a selection and we can type in the list. So let's maybe say on one side or the second option on both sides, like so. The default will say that the default will always be on both sides and then click insert. So we've now gone ahead and set up a variable on this tab, which we can use in our expressions and our formulas over here. So for the formula, we'll start with an F function. Double click on F and to say that if the variable of architrave, so I'm going to double click on architrave, equals on one side, then the formula is going to be made up of the height of the door plus the length of the door plus the height of that door. Okay, so that's just the um, one side. Else, highlight this formula. Else, it's going to be the other option, which is on both sides of the wall. So we'll say two times our formula that we've just used. So the height plus the length plus the height, because we're allowing it on both sides. So if we just run through that formula again, we're saying that if the architrave variable is on one side, then we only want to use the height plus the length plus the height. Otherwise, we want to say two times that value because it's, it's assuming it's on both sides. So we can then click close and we now have that formula in the architrave field. Door stop. We can set up a variable. So we'll click on the ellipsis button go to the variables tab and insert a new variable. Find door stop. Um, what type will say, uh, again, selection. Or we can, let's maybe change it to a number where you can type in a number, the unit will be number. And the default will say that there's always gonna be at least one door stop. Uh, but you can change that to others as well, a, a separate number. So let's click insert. So for the formula, that is simply just going to be our door stop variable, just like that. So whatever the variable is, we want that number or value to appear over there. So I'll click close. We've now got that formula in there. And then for the paint, We'll click on the ellipsis button. Again, we'll set up a, a variable click on insert, say paint. What, are, what type of field are you going to set up? A selection, say on one side or on both sides. The default will choose on both sides and then click insert. Now for the actual formula, We'll start with that F function again. So we'll go to the functions tab, double click on F, and we can say if our variable of paint equals on one side, then we are just simply going to use the length of the door times the height of the door. Else, we want to multiply that by two because it's assuming it's going to be painted on both sides. If you don't choose on one side, you're going to choose on both sides. So we'll type in two times the length times height. And then we can click close. So you can work through setting up a list of custom quantities. And we've just covered three over here and build formulas in them using variables. Now we can come up to the variables tab and you'll see there's our three variables, architrave, paint, and door stop. If you want to 
kind of change the order of these variables. You can click and say the door stop, and we can move that up so that that appears uh, second in the list. Great. Now to show you how to do the measurement, we'll go ahead and click on the insert button. And we've now added that really intelligent dimension group. Obviously, you don't want to be doing that every single time. Now, you can set this up as a list of template items as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select this dimension group, move over onto the drawing, and just simply drop a count on that. And you can see it pops up with our variables. Because I had turned the properties on add button, it's now displaying this properties window, allowing us to change the variables in this list. So the architrave, that's going to be on one side. Um, so I'll change that selection and the door stop because it's just one door. We'll leave that set to one and the paint we're going to say on both sides and then click update. And you'll notice now when we point back at this measurement, we've got a count. Okay, we've got a length quantity. Now we had set up the dimension group to automatically read the length from the text in the dimension group. So we've got a length over there of 0.81. We also set it up to measure or identify the text in the dimension group of the height of the door. So we now have the height of 2.13 meters. And therefore, it's automatically calculated the wall area quantity for us. We also have an architrave length, one door stop for that door, and the paint to that door is going to be 3.47 square meters. And now we can go ahead and count the other one. And assuming it's going to be the same, it's remembered our variable selection. So we can just simply click update and we've got the same information for that door over there. Now where this also becomes really useful and efficient is we can copy these dimension groups, which will maintain all of that intelligence. You can imagine you've spent time building up formulas and intelligence into the dimension group. Now you just wanna go ahead and re retain that information when you copy this dimension group. So we, we haven't yet measured another door size over here. Um, it's going to be this door over here, um, that door over there, the 864. So what we can do is we can right click over this dimension group. We'll copy the dimension group and we'll give it a new name. So a different size. It's going to be the size is 864 by 2. One, three, four. Remember, this dimension group is set up with the intelligence to read these numbers and put into the formula automatically for you. So we'll go ahead and click on in OK to insert that dimension group. Now it has retained the actual measure that we measured before. So I'm just going to um, say Control A to select those two doors and delete them out and clear um, the dimension group out. So we've got uh, zero quantity for that dimension group. And then move over onto this door and go ahead and do the measurement. And you can see how it's retained all of the variables and all the, the intelligence in this dimension group. So architraves is going to be on, on both sides of that door. Uh, one door stop. The paint is maybe just going to be on the one side. The other side is some type of veneer finish. And we can click update. And you'll see now it's got that same information for us. Okay, so various different options and methods on how you can count doors or measure doors. So, and the, a lot of the same methodology can be used for other trades as well, such as windows and so on and so forth. Having now measured all the doors, how do we then use that in the workbook? Let's switch over to the workbook view and open up an existing workbook that I've got, have open over here, and you'll see I've not yet um, populated the doors and hardware trade. So I'm going to double click on the doors subtotal to drill down into level two of the workbook. And we've already got the count for our exterior aluminium doors. So I'll go ahead and select that dimension group, drag it and drop it down into the description column. We'll maintain the same description. Um, we'll drop down the count and um, you could put in a rate uh, of whatever that door cost might be. Let's say it's going to be $1,700 and click update. And it multiplies out to give us a total for that type of door.
door. Now for the interior doors, what we could do is we could select these in mass by holding down the shift key, I'll select the range like so, and drag and drop the, the dimension groups into your workbook. We want to drop down the count and then click OK. And then once they've been dropped in, you can clear these rates out and start typing in your own rates for those types of doors. You'll notice that these quantities are all green, which means they are live linked to these dimension groups. So if there, you had missed any doors or um, you maybe updated, received an updated drawing with an extra few doors, you can go back to the, the drawing and count them and these items in your workbook will automatically update for you. If I return back up and drill down into our hardware trade, you'll notice I've already set up a few items over here where I've said door hardware and for this specific type of door or that size, um, some of this information is already feeding into my workbook. So you could set up a sort of a template so that that is already linked in if you want to. However, you'll see I haven't yet got my quantities for these two items. So it's a simple case of selecting that dimension group with all that intelligence in it, dragging it across and dropping it down against the description or the item in the workbook. And when I drop it down, you'll see that the quantity type is set to count, which is the default display um, unit over there. However, if I click on the drop down arrow, you can now see a list of all that secondary quantity information, all that intelligence that we've built into the dimension group. You can choose one of those quantities, obviously depending on what the description is in the workbook. So in this case, um, we want to drop down the acoustic seal. I'll go ahead and select that from the drop down list. And you could set the rounding if you want to. So I'll set, select zero decimal places and then click update. And now it's gone ahead and dropped the acoustic seal length in. For the door closer of this door type, we'll select that door type, drag it, drop it down, and we can just simply click on the drop down arrow and choose um, the door closer. Secondary quantity is going to be um, six over there in total. So we'll click update and it's now dropped down um, that, that quantity for us. So as you can see now for all the other types, you can follow the same process. You can even if you wanted to copy and paste some of this text down and then just update the quantities for the new dimension groups. And then once you're finished, you can return back up and we've now finished um, the doors and the hardware. So hopefully that's given you a good idea on how you could go ahead and measure doors and hardware. Um, there are various different methods. It's up to you just to choose one method. It's not to say any of these are the correct methods for you. Um, that's just some of the functionality built into i2 Costex. Um, it's up to you just to choose which functionality you might want to use. Otherwise, Thank you everyone for joining in today's coffee break webinar um, if you'd like you can hop onto our website as displayed up on the screen over there www.rvinternational.com forward slash webinars and if you have any further questions um, on anything that we've shown today please feel free to reach out to support.int at rv slash dash software.com um, and if you're on our or part of our maintenance program, we'll most definitely offer um, some support around some of those queries. Otherwise, thank you everyone for attending and hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Bye.